Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Daily Chinwag with me, Richard Vobes. Nice to have your company. Today, I had to go and help my son, Billy, and along with my friend, Tim, who really was doing most of the work. I was there just sort of supervising, let's say that, or just drinking the tea, probably. Anyway, um, he had a problem with his sink and uh, it was leaking on the waste pipe. So Tim came along and we had a look at it. And as we were trying to assemble the bits and pieces that we were required to fix the problem, um, it transpires that further down the pipe was a blockage, which also needed to be doing. And uh, so my question to you is, how is it that one simple job turns into a massive job because now poor old Bill has got to pull apart half of his bathroom where the tiles are to get to the pipes to get to a point where some bad building work when this was originally installed um, was <coughs> hidden by all the tiles and the sort of a boxing in of bits to get to the w point where the blockage is so that we can cut that section out uh, replace it with a, a better way of doing it, um, at clean it all up, and then put a stretch of um, pipe back to his original sink. So <clears throat> my question is that what starts off as a simple job, why is it that everything increases to become a major job? And is it better that you do that? Tim said, well, we could fix this end, but ultimately you're going to need to do that end anyway and it would be easier if we did the whole thing in one go because you could get all the necessary pipes, brackets, U-bends, um, elbow joints and all of that that are all in the right size and shape because it does seem that the uh, the dodgy building work had, uh, had a n numerous different sizes to the point that there was a bodge going on right at the end in which something was just poked in and not properly screwed up and uh, anyway it was leaking so yes isn't it strange how one simple job is never that simple job I often think and underestimate jobs in the house that I've got to do and you think oh I know I'll just quickly do this thing it should only take 10 minutes but it doesn't it never does does it it'll suddenly become two hours and you go, wait a minute, this was only supposed to be this, but as you start un you start this one thing and suddenly you start to see, hang on a minute, there's all of this down that I couldn't see before. <clears throat> Does that happen to you? Do you start jobs and then realise, oh God, I wish I'd never blooming well started because it seems to escalate into something a lot more. And of course, it always affects the pocket that way. So I'm interested to know today what kind of jobs have you started and have you wished you'd never started or never interfered or have you found that actually you have the magic touch that really and truly you do a job and you can estimate it in to a certain length of time like, oh yeah, that'll just take an hour and it actually takes an hour. I know when I'm filming things in the house you think oh I'm just going to make some bread and I'll film me making bread but I want to film it from lots of different angles it'll only take an hour or so to do that and then three hours later yes I'm still there trying to light the thing and film the thing and do the job everything takes much longer do you tend to underestimate or overestimate the job uh, be interested it depends of course on your DIY skills on certain things are you somebody that will tackle these things yourself, save a bit of money and give it a go? And then do you think, do you know what? I wish I'd never started this. Uh, I should have got a builder in to do it. Or in the days at the moment where we've got the cost of living crisis and everything is a little bit expensive um, and we're all trying to save a little bit of money, do you give things a go? Are you willing to give something a go? Are you up for the challenge? And do you... When you're trying to learn how to do something, do you find that the YouTube videos, of which there are usually quite a lot on any given subject these days that show you how to fix, do they work out for you?
There we go. Lots of questions on doing it yourself in the house. Are you somebody who's brave enough to give it a go? And then when you are, why is it that everything seems to take far longer and cost more than the original job? Be interested in your thoughts on that. Let's have a look at the comments uh, recently um, from the last couple of videos or so. And um, what gets you up in the morning was a question that we had earlier in the week. And Shirley Lynch says, like to keep positive, love life despite the aches and pains. I try not to worry about tomorrow. Just take each day and find something that gives me joy. Something new to think on each day. For instance, your daily chinwag. Well, I'm very pleased that the daily chinwag gives you an option to think about something new. And yes, I think that's the perfect way to be, is to have a positive mental, out positive mental attitude and outlook on life. So yeah, brilliant. Uh, ENG says, I eat when I'm hungry. Three, ma three meals a day is a myth. Government contracts for prisons need looked at. One meal is fine with tea and buns. Sounds nice, doesn't it? I need to have some breakfast. I haven't had any breakfast this morning. As I say, I've been out helping uh, Bill, uh, my son Billy. And um, <clears throat> so I come back in here and I thought, well, I better get the daily chimwag up. So I'm going to have some breakfast shortly. Um, yes, my day in terms of food, sometimes I will have a breakfast. Sometimes it's it's kind of a late breakfast and lunch and then usually an evening meal by 6, 6.30 and then I tend to stop. Um, Bullet Tube says, what gets me up in the morning? My cats. Ah, yes. And then H. Carlson answers that by saying, me too. I'm up. So might as well go to work. I celebrate the imagination of writers because I love to read. Thank the fates that we're all different and have such varied imaginations. It would be really boring if we all thought the same and followed the same pattern in life. It does. I love people watching when I'm out and about and is sitting in the van having a cup of tea. It's interesting watching people. If we were all the same, how boring would that be? Absolutely. I'm also, says uh, H. Carlson, thankful for water, lakes and rivers. They are peaceful and energising. Yes, it is lovely to sit down by a river, isn't it, and a lake and just let the world go by. You can see why fishermen enjoy the sport of fishing or angling. <clears throat> is it angling? If you're, I forget which one is the fishermen are at the sea and anglers at rivers is that right i may have got that um the wrong way around i'm not sure not being a fisherman but i can see the merits of just you know you're sitting there you've got your rod in the water and actually the fact that you may or may not catch anything doesn't seem to be the issue is it it's just being away being next to water very peaceful and you can uh, chill out we all need to chill out from time to time uh ingram carr says when i'm out over the Sussex Downs, all the problems of the world are not apparent. And that's a lovely way to be, isn't it? It gives you an excuse to get away and forget about your troubles and just look at the world as it is. You know, the higher you climb up, when you climb up hills or even mountains and you look down, everything seems so far away and the problems seem a distant thing. However, of course, you do have to return to to civilization and then all those problems are st still there but maybe the subconscious mind has assimilated the answers to those problems carl chapman says you're seeing things on the bright side because of the lovely julia uh, that's a, a certainly a good way for me to see things on the bright side why not three p's afterlife contact says the media for the last 10 to 15 years have been scaremongering. It's all a big plan for the Great Reset, controlling what we eat and drink. The health system has been cut back immensely. An accident on the street now, the person can wait up to an hour or more. And yet, I have been to the local hospital and seen the ambulances all parked up and the hospital is near an is near enough empty of people. That's, um, yeah, it's a state of play at the moment, but certainly the media is t trying to frighten us. I do think that with 
all social media and the mainstream media that people are clawing for attention. And with all these different things actually asking for our attention, the only way to get it is by hyping everything up. So the news has to be even worse than it was the day before. Otherwise, perhaps you won't watch it. Everybody likes to be uh, nosy. And if there's something bad going on in the world, everybody seems for some reason more interested in what's gone badly wrong rather than knowing that things are right. So it, it is a strange old thing. Mary Fennell says, I feel grateful for where I live, a beautiful part of Devon, and I'm lucky that at 70 I still have my health and can enjoy walking. And may that l go on forever, Mary. How lovely is that? What a beautiful part of the world to live in. It does sound rather idyllic. Glyn Horton says, the things I look forward to is a beautiful, clear, sunny day with white clouds and a crystal clear view into the distance. Yes, that's very lovely. Listening to good music by a great band such as the Beatles. A good breakfast of bacon and eggs. And you can't go wrong with bacon and eggs, can you? And a pint of real ale is lovely in a friendly pub. Yes, I used to drink, not lots, but I used to drink real ale, love real ale, as opposed to lagers and wine and things like that. Real ale, I, for a long time, followed the, the, uh, the path of the real ale because although you only have those four basic ingredients, water, um, barley or malt, I suppose, um, yeast... And uh, what is the other ingredient? Hops, of course. The variations of that and the variations of how the malt is made from the barley, where, where how it's been roasted, can give you a myriad of different types of ale. And uh, I did, yeah, for a long time, go out and sort of, you know, loved that tasting of different ales and went to ale festivals and real ale festivals and that sort of thing i don't so much now i'm not so much interested in drinking or indeed uh, having too much sugar in the system but um yeah i i absolutely agree the occasional ale very lovely especially if you can have it in the countryside or as you say in a friendly pub very nice uh, louise lage says music Music of all types makes me happy and a lot of gratitude that I can still enjoy it. I've gotten back to cloud gazing, which I loved as a child, being in the outdoor, away from the crowds and cooking up a great meal for us to enjoy. These are the things that I also find pleasurable and nourishing for the soul. And that cloud gazing, you know, it's free, isn't it? As I said yesterday, most of the great things in life are free. Uh, the, 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 we are tantalizingly drawn to things which cost a lot of money but actually they're all artificial the greatest things i think is still definitely free but somehow we take them for granted and we even forget that they're there william scott ryan says hi richard well after all your videos of just sticking to england i celebrate the fact that i travel the world at will I'm supposed to live in the Philippines, but with COVID, I've not been able to see my girlfriend for over two years. Um, they're currently in Bulgaria. Richard, I celebrate the 41 countries I've been to over the 30 years and celebrate the different cultures. Well, good for you, William. Um, I think it's each to their own, of course. And um, if you enjoy travel and traveling and exploring different cultures, then that's great. I'm still absolutely fascinated by the history and the culture of the English way of life and the different geology I suppose that has um, what would you say depicted or dictated rather the, the type of architecture that we have up and down this country and how swiftly it changes because the rock formations underneath the uh, the ground changes and depicts and, and controls really the environment, the local environment that one's in. And I love all that. The Vintage News says Lindy Hop, the jitterbug, is how I celebrate. I can be a little flirty, but it always brings me the feeling I remember from getting from the playground when I am a lad. It's always nice, isn't it, to look back on... Um, 
our childhood and those things that give that sort of initial excitement and zest to life children seem to get a lot of a zest for life and if we could recapture that in our adult lives that would i think we'd be so much better susie davis says now that i'm retired I do, in theory, have much more time to get projects completed. Sometimes, however, I think my get up and go has got up and gone. Oh dear, sorry about to hear that, Susie. And finally, um, Sean's allotment garden says, from a gardening point of view, we need hard and long winters to kill off the pests and the diseases. Over the past few years, we're having mild winters and the level of pests and diseases in the vegetable garden are much higher than 20 years ago. Bring back a week of heavy frosts and snow. Love it. Yes, I imagine that growing food that um, in this country, particularly the cycle is dependent on a number of uh, things like frost so that you can get rid of those pests and protect your food so it's an interesting point we can't just have a, a warm climate because um, the indigenous uh, and native um, plants have uh, their own cycle and if you if that changes too much of course then presumably they will die off because they're not used to the the changing environment um, but I don't think it is actually changing drastically anyway, as I've mentioned many times before. So anyway, there's a, a sample of the comments. Thank you very much. Do enjoy that. So have you had experience where you started a job, thought it was only going to take so long, only to discover it takes a bloody sight longer than you thought or that it's got more expensive? Or has the converse happened that you start something and actually... You did it in record time. Love to hear your comments. Hope this has been an interesting um, observation and we'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now.